Insatiableness is good, but not ingratitude. Um, what can that mean? Well, I've been talking about uh, a little bit how we don't really want to believe the good news. I, I think we just want some struggle and suffering. And so we you know, insist upon, yes, the, the uh, deadness of the heart and sin and the depravity and all these things which are true, right? Um, but we kind of miss when we do that. We miss the fact that acknowledging all those things is the reason that we would want to pay attention to them at all is because it's the only route into delighting in the joy of the true glory of the Lord, right? All of which is very good, right? And so now Treherne talks to turns to talk about wanting, right? Wanting things. Uh, as I said before, right? What do you really want uh, underneath all of this stuff? And if you sit with your desires long enough, even if they're desires for like cake, right? If you sit with your desires for things that you know that you shouldn't have, like sex, abundant sex everywhere, right? Um, if you sit with them long enough and ask yourself, what do you, what do I really want? Um, sometimes it's like, just peace, right? Sometimes it's belonging. Sometimes it's, and, and therapists do this sometimes with their clients, right? What is, what's the underlying desire here? And the deeper you get into that question, the more you realize that the things you actually want, right, that you think these other goods will bring you um, are actually profounder than the sort of external things that you want, right? Why do you want lots of sex? Well, because I want, uh, you know, physical gratification and companionship. Well, why do you want companionship, right? If you ask this why question again, well, because I, I, I want to belong, right? Well, why do you want belonging? Um, well, because I, you know, I, I'm lonely, right? Um, and then you start to say, well, okay, so if you're lonely, maybe you shouldn't sleep with everything that moves <laughs> because that's a bad way to form long-standing relationships, right? So if you do this with yourself long enough, you realize that your deeper desires are actually pointing you sometimes away from altogether the immediate gratification and towards something that will be a deeper and more sustained gratification. Think about this. I've talked, I've used this example before, but you know, you get up at six in the morning and you want to work out and you have to get out of bed if you want to work out. Um, but you just feel so tired and you want comfort too. Right. And so you hit the snooze button and you never end up going to the gym. And so you get your comfort, your immediate comfort, right? You get the thing that is right there in front of you, the tasty, shiny object. Uh, but unless you deny yourself that immediate objective desire, you'll never learn that what actually happens when you go to the gym is you attain a richer form of comfort, right? You didn't even realize how uncomfortable you were in the body of somebody who never works out, right? So once you start to work out, then you realize, oh, I actually got the thing that I gave up when I left my bed, right? Um, and that's because you stopped for a second or even subconsciously and you said, well, what do I actually want when I want to stay in bed? What I really want is comfort. And comfort is actually going to be attained in a deeper and more sustainable way um, if I go to the gym. And uh, the deeper and the more you do this, the more you realize that all of your desires might actually have some substrate, um, some common substrate, which is the highest good of all.